Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++ and today we're going to be learning about dynamic arrays as well as how to delete or in other words deallocate memory that you might have created so either either it being arrays like what we're going to learn now or just regular integers like what we did in the last tutorial so first of all let's uh, well, learn how to create dynamic arrays so uh, in order to create a dynamic array all you would do is type out the data type of course followed by your little dereference operator and let's call it D array, something like that. And that's it. So all it is so far is just some address in memory, not even pointing anywhere at all. But if you want to create an array, what you would do is just type out D array, like we did before, and set it equal to, using the new keyword, an int. And then inside these brackets, that's the only addition that we've done so far, you have to put in some sort of constant number. So uh, I'm just gonna, instead of just putting in a thousand or whatever, I'll just type out const int capacity equal to a thousand. And then you just plug capacity in there like that. But now you might be wondering, well that's great and all, but isn't this pretty much the same way as just creating a regular array without you know, making it in the heap, just regular computer memory? What's the difference? I mean, I have a constant right here, that's not dynamic at all or um, excuse me that's not a uh, yeah it's not dynamic uh, that's in regular computer memory and well the only difference is that the array itself is in the heap so what's the advantage well like I said in the last two tutorials that I was going to be showing you is how to actually deallocate memory when you no longer need it and for an example this array you as the user you might only want to use maybe five elements inside of it that's it but maybe the programmer that created it needs to make it so it could it could hold up to a thousand because maybe someone else needs to use a thousand while other people like yourself might only need to use five or ten if it's being set up to use a thousand it doesn't matter it's still going to be taking up all that space reserving all that memory for those thousand slots so when you're done when you no longer need to use that array what you're going to want to do is to deallocate it delete it remove it from the heap remove it from your computer completely because it's taking up so much space so that's a huge colossal advantage in using dynamic arrays as opposed to static arrays which is what we've been dealing with in the, those uh, tutorials not too long ago uh, excuse me so uh, well first of all let's actually figure out how you actually assign values I'm not gonna do any functions where you know you pass things in and do loops or whatnot I'll just add them in you guys already know how to do that anyway so I won't bore you. So in order to assign values to the uh, specific indices inside of this array, all you do is type out the, the identifier without the div reference operator. Don't use the asterisk. And then at whatever index number you want. So at index 0, I'll call it 3. And let me just copy and paste this a few times so it doesn't take me too long. Paste, paste, paste. So that's 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, so that's the first four, so I'll make this one seven, two, nine, seven like that. Then, oh, there we go. Those are our four values. So if I were to, let's create a little loop here. C out array, colon. And then if I made a little for loop, is the for loop what I want to use? Yeah, I'm going to get a for loop. So I'll go int i is equal to zero while i is less than uh... is it four? I guess I'll just go four i plus plus then what I'm going to want to do is see out the dynamic array at index i and an additional space and that should be everything that I want so as you can see still no dereference operator notice that that's a little different from the regular pointers that we've been using when we want to get the values of a pointer what we did, or whatever a pointer is pointing to, we use the reference operator. But as you can see here, you do not. So remember that. And that's it. So is there anything else I'm supposed to do? Oh yeah, return zero. I don't know why I got rid of the return there. So there we go. So uh, there you go. Save, and let's run this. See if it all works out. And there it is. So we got the array, 3729. So we got all the numbers. And notice again, we did not use the dereference operator here. We didn't use them here. 
uh, and that's pretty much how you use these dynamic arrays. So how do you actually go about deleting them out of a memory when you no longer need them? Because remember, uh, since this isn't regular computer memory, when we were talking about objects, for example, I told you how variables and objects are deleted as soon as you exit the function that instantiated them. So if you create any regular variables in your main function or any objects, for an example, uh, using classes, as soon as you hit this return zero, or any time you leave the f any any function doesn't need to be the main function, just anywhere. Once you leave that function, they are destroyed, and that's why when we create classes, we had to create destructors. But these guys are a little bit different. These guys will always be there. However, there's also another exception. If you create, if you have a dynamic array or you know some sort of pointer that's dynamically created inside of a class and it's uh, and, and it's you know you actually created inside the class it's not outside the class when the object that uses those variables is destroyed so is the other stuff so if you dynamically create any variables uh, for example any mem member variables inside of a class and you know you use them with multiple objects when those objects are destroyed so are those so don't worry but in this case they are not when we hit this return zero well, they will be destroyed, but that's because the whole application is closing. But let's say this is a, a different function. Uh, when you leave it, it's still going to be in memory that whole time, and you don't want that. So we're going to want to get rid of this and get this out of the heap. So in order to do this, what you would do is type out delete. Then after that, if it's an array, use your brackets followed by the name of the, the identifier for that array. And there you go. So is that good enough? Well, it deletes all of the uh, values. It de deletes all of these guys right here. However, the pointer still exists, and it's going to be pointing somewhere. And the number that can be returned, let's say you were to try returning it, is unpredictable. We don't know what it's going to be. So just to play it safe, another thing that you could do, which is a very good coding practice, is to set it equal to null. Now, if you're going to be leaving the function that uses the, these um, uh, dynamically created variables, this might actually be a little redundant. You won't need it. So in this case, I wouldn't need it. But if you have more code that you're going to be doing down there, then it's good to have it, just in case. So uh, let's actually see what happens. Let's see if something, something uh, happens here. So let's go see out the array after we delete it. So we'll go at 0 and then down here same thing at zero so let's actually see the difference here shall we so if I go control F5 oh look at that it actually even crashed because it's no longer in memory okay before I actually uh, stop this since obviously I broke the program right here it broke but uh, right here right here what happened is it returned just this really funky number is this an address uh... no it, this is not an address at least i'm pretty sure it's not uh... this is just a funky number that's now equal to the first value of the the array but once we use the null it's obviously completely gone so when i tried printing it the application just broke so let's close this program uh... sorry but i was actually not expecting that but uh... yeah that's why you would do that so it's completely out of memory and you don't have to worry about anything I was definitely not expecting that. Well, that shows you what I've tested. I've not tested this before. But yeah, that's why you'll want to use the equal to null. So that's really important. Now, if you're going to be deleting a regular variable, or uh, a regular dynamically created variable inside the heap, then you don't use these brackets right there. But, uh, but this is an array, so you do. Whoops, not curly braces. So that's about all I wanted to show you. Uh, so just remember, if you just, if you just want to delete a regular dynamically created variable not a not a uh, an array then you'd still do both of these just without the brackets right here because it's not an array and that's about all I wanted to show you so I uh, another not too long video I hope you um, that really makes it easier for you guys none of those 20 minute videos uh, and well I'll see you next time for I believe that will be recursion so I'll see you next time